Well, you uh, did something uh, pretty amazing. You got your cyber uh, security bill passed with bipartisan support, huge bipartisan support. What um, I'd like to know is why didn't we get the uh, President of the United States and Pelosi to be supportive of this well, great legislation? Let me talk about the bill first okay. and tell you what the bill does. Uh, cyber attacks are one of the most serious threats that we have facing our nation right now. In my role as the ranking member of the Intelligence Committee, people say, Dutch, what keeps you up at night? Because we hear so many issues involving uh, attacks, cyber attacks, uh, attacks like we had in Boston, these type of things. And that's what we deal with. They say, what keeps you up at night? And I'll say, well, spicy Mexican food, <clears throat> weapons of mass destruction, and cyber attacks. Cyber attacks are occurring every day as we speak. Some companies just in, in our area could be attacked 3,000 times in one day. And yet the Congress right now, is try we're trying to pass a bill that allows our intelligence community to communicate with the, the, uh, the business community, especially the provider. Just in the last two years, Cyber Command, which, who's responsible for protecting all of our military and our intelligence network, estimated that we in the United States have lost over $4 billion of trade secrets, of information uh, that we have in our, in our country that our businesses use, and it's being stolen mostly from, from China, and it's being stolen on a regular basis. When China is competing with our businesses, they got the information. They see the, the, the memos that are going back and forth on, on, on the Internet. So this has been a very serious issue. Now, let me explain what this means, because I might have to get in the weeds a little bit, so stop me if you think I'm yeah, getting too okay. technical. <clears throat> what happens in our system in the United States today, 80% of our network is controlled by 10 providers, AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, these different, these different providers. The providers are the ones that represent you and me and all of our businesses. As a result of what they do, uh, they are getting attacked all the time, and their customers, who, who are us, are getting attacked all the time. Our intelligence community is as good as anyone in the world in what we do, and we have the ability to see these attacks and stop these attacks. But under a 1947 law, the intelligence community is not allowed to communicate and to pass information back and forth, and it's really computer type information, zeros and ones, back and forth to protect our country. So Chairman Rogers and I, who is Ch Chairman Rogers from Michigan, uh, is Chairman of the Intelligence Committee. I'm, I'm the ranking Democrat. I'm in charge of all the Democrats. And those, we as the leaders of the committee decided we had to do something about these cyber attacks. And so what we did is that for one year we brought in uh, the privacy groups, the ACLU, we brought in the business community, we brought in the White House, we brought in almost everyone we could to try to put together a bill that would allow our intelligence community, our government, to protect us from these really serious attacks. So what we did, we put together a bill. It was only 27 pages, uh, which is probably a record in Congress. And by the way, I did read the bill, too. You're known for brevity. <laughs> right. Well, you know, if you want to get it done, you, you have to let people know what it is. So what our bill basically did is allow uh, the government, when we see these attacks, get the, to get the information to the providers, to the business community, and then, then that once they got that information or if they got uh, information and they were getting attacks, they'd call 911 and say, hey, government, we need your help. This is where the, the criticism was coming from the privacy group saying that when the providers would pass the information to us so that we could protect them, um, that they're saying that violates privacy. That is not the case. What was being passed back and forth are it's computer uh, communication. It's zeros and ones. But notwithstanding that, we decided to try to deal with these privacy issues in our, in our small bill. And the other problem are what we call destructive attacks. Now, Aramco is a company, it's a large, one of the largest oil companies in the world. It's the oil company for Saudi Arabia. Uh, Aramco, and, and the media has, has said this, uh, was attacked, the media said, by Iran. And Iran, who is not as sophisticated but has the ability to also cyber attack, knocked out 30,000 of their computers in Aramco. And it's really shut down the largest oil company in the world, one of the largest in the world. I'm concerned this is going to happen in the United States, especially with Iran. I'm concerned right now we have indication that Iran uh, is probing in, in our banking industry and Wall Street. And this could happen. I'm also concerned about our critical infrastructure. Anything having to do with technology can be shut down. 
whether, whether it, it be uh, our grid system, our electrical system, our air traffic control system. It, it, it could be uh, any, anything using a computer, and this could really have an effect. Just imagine Baltimore City, and if, the, if all the lights go out because of an attack, and imagine what it could do. It could cause catastrophic problems. And let me give you some other examples, too. When Russia attacked Georgia uh, about three or four years ago, they cyber attacked them. They shut down all their communication. And this is what is really so concerning about the whole cyber threat. And you know, most of the people in the country don't have a clue on what cyber security is and about these attacks. It's to the point where China has literally attacked small businesses, small fertilizer companies in our country just because they, do, they compete with us with fertilizer. So they're doing it in any of these areas. So let me bring it back. You're talking about stealing money, number one, and probably just from the United States, $4 billion. That's probably one of the biggest thefts in the history of the world. But also what I'm concerned about are the destructive attacks.